Clackacraft Drift Boat puts you in touch with the river. Often copied, but never eaten, Clackacraft has created the perfect casting platform. Designed by fly fishers for fly fishers, the Clackacraft Tunnel Hull gives the angler and the oarsman every advantage. Test drive the sports car of drift boats and fear no rock in a Clackacraft. Well, Dean, here we are at the first rapids. Now, you know the river, but a guy who doesn't know a river like this, what should he do in this situation? Well, this is one of those ideal spots where you want to pull the boat to shore if you're not sure, because mm -hmm. when you look down through this, you really can't see all that's involved in it. Right. Pull the boat to shore, make sure the boat's secure, get out and walk it. Okay, so entering this rapids, we've got a kind of an interesting situation. There's actually at this water level, two channels that we can choose from. That's correct, that's correct. And as you kind of pick this rapid apart, um, from the bank like what we're doing right now, you can see some obstacles that you're going to want to prepare for. As you start down into this rapid, you've got this chute that's in close to you. There's a little tongue right there, and yep. that tongue tells you that you've got water funneling into to some obstructions right. that you're going to want to avoid. So in this case, as I come down into this, I'm going to cock my transom or the back of the boat towards the opposite bank slightly at about a 45 degree angle so that I can just kind of gently pull away from this ledge. You can see the white water kind of cascading yep. over this ledge. That'll set me up as I come down along in here. You can see how the current's kind of pushing you into this rock ledge here. Sure. As you come down through, you're going to want to have that boat kicked out just at enough angle that you can start to pull away. As you start to drop down in, you can see another standing wave with water boiling over the top of a good sized boulder out there. Right. And that's clearly an obstruction that you're going to want to make your decision left or right. Um, in this case, like you mentioned, you've got enough height where you can actually go either way. I will likely go to the right hand side right. Um, simply because it just gives me a little bit more room to maneuver as I continue down through sure. the rest of the rapid. Now we've got that big, huge boulder out there, but there's a lot of room to miss that. Tons of room. You'll see that, you know, from the minute you enter this thing. In a situation where a guy's coming down and the slot is narrow and the current wants to push him toward that rock, what should he do to avoid it? Point the bow towards it okay. and pull away. All it's right. really simple. Any of these obstructions that you can see, you're just going to want to point the bow towards it and pull away with your oars. Right. And don't stop pulling. Don't pull, yeah. And it's, it, I recommend, n don't get panicked. You know, right. if, as you're getting close to these things, you'll be amazed at how responsive the boat will become. And usually, you know, three to five pulls on the oars will be enough to pull away if they're nice, steady, deep pulls with the oars. And, okay. and by deep, I don't necessarily mean deep with the blades, just the length of the pull. Right. You can make a little choppy. Uh, stroke with the oar that really isn't moving a lot of water and moving your boat much. It's fine to do that for gentle little, you know, adjustments of where your bow's at. But normally when you're trying to avoid an obstacle, I recommend nice, slow, long, steady pulls on the oars. And usually, like I say, three to five in most current speeds will pull you away from those mm -hmm. things. And it, even if your boat nudges against it, it's not going to hurt anything. Exactly. Right. You know, these yeah. boats are designed right. uh, to be banged around and you're not right. going to hurt anything. Right. Most dangerous hazards that you can run across in a drift boat, uh, oftentimes they've got branches and, and uh, leaves and things like that, especially if it's a freshly fallen tree, and they'll grab drift boats and sink them just that quick. Yeah. Uh, many boats are lost every year to sweepers, and so you really want to pay close attention as you're coming into a bend. Normally you'll find sweepers where there's a bend in the river where the current is washed into the bank exactly. and cause that erosion. It. Undercut right. it. Exactly. And the current wants to suck you right into those. And that's where you need to be paying attention and looking ahead and looking right. for these kinds of obstacles. Um, you know, when it's up in the up out of the water like that, it's real visible, real easy to right. see. But if you're not paying attention and you come up on it, it can become a, a so it's real all, treacherous. Always pay attention what's downriver. Yeah. Of you. Yeah. yeah. And if, if if you've got two people in front of you and you can't see around them, stand up. You, yeah. know, look, you know, hold on to your oars and look above them. Right. Um, you know, do what you need to do to, to keep your vision unimpaired at anything that may be a potential hazard downstream. Okay. Now this little rapids, uh, how are we going to position the boat to go through this? Again, as you look down through here, you can see where the main channel is. There's some shallow... There's kind of a tongue, a V that goes into this, isn't there? Exactly. And it's those Vs that you want to be positioning your boat to, right. to run down through. Um, as you come down into this, you've got plenty of water running over the tops of these reeves, so those, they don't become uh, too much of a concern. But you want to watch as that current pushes you into this far left bank as you're looking downstream, the bank left. 
um, you can see that current's kind of pushing you down into there, so you want to be prepared to pull away from that. All right. Especially in a slot that's this narrow, right. when you've got your oars stuck out there and you drop into a, a narrow chute like this, you don't want to be dragging your oars or smacking your oars on the bank. Right. Um, so be prepared to pull away from it. The boat will run down through those standing waves without any problems. If you do start to slow down in the bottom of a standing wave, just push forward with your oars, gain a little bit of momentum, and it'll pop it right up over the top of it. Where you want to avoid getting hung up in standing waves, um, which are those waves that are causing these drops and then the white caps, mm -hmm. is if your boat starts to turn sideways in a real big one. Right. That can cause you significant problems. Keep right. the bow pointed downstream, keep your momentum going, and you'll just blow right through all that stuff. And as we pro progress down through this chute and continue to scout, um, there'll be some other areas down below right. that'll cause us concern because also. Because from where we're standing right now, we can't see all the way through this rapids. No, we're, we're missing uh, probably three quarters of the bottom end of this, and there's right. a significant obstruction down there yeah. also. So we need to walk down there and take a closer look. Continue with our scout, exactly. Okay. So here we are looking at the final stage of this rapids, Dean. And uh, there's a fairly obvious entry into this last little uh, popper right here. How are we gonna how are we gonna go through this? Well the first part of this chute as we come down, you can see the standing waves up here in the top. Right. And we needed to pull the boat to kick the side out and come down through those standing waves. And as we put position the boat here, you can see the real distinct dark green water and it's edged on both sides by rocks, and then you've got a good standing wave here. That standing wave denotes a real deep hole on the bottom end, which is what's causing that standing wave. So right. as the boat comes down through this, you want to point the bow for that standing wave, and I usually, depending on the size of the wave, will give a couple of pushes downstream on the oars Keep to get my momentum. acceleration it's, and your momentum going exactly. through that? Exactly. Yeah. So you, if you do end up hanging up in that standing wave a little bit, there'll be enough power to, to kind of blast you through it. Because the last thing you want to do is end up sideways in a standing wave like that. Yeah, As exactly. you proceed down through this, you can see the uh, edge of the current here, and the water starts to boil up along this current seam. And I generally will try to maintain the boat's downstream progression through this and avoid those types of areas because as soon as you start into those boils like that and those current seams, you start to lose control of the boat. And some of them, we actually call them suck holes because once you get sucked into them, yeah. they're very, very difficult to get out of. I and where they become significantly more dangerous is they usually um, occur in areas where you've got a steep bank and what do you have along the banks of rivers? Sweepers, trees, right. limbs, those yeah. kinds of things. Find the tongue or the V and aim your boat for it. And we start to drop down into it. Got an obstruction on my left, got another one on my right. And then further down in the chute, there's a great big boulder. So we want to aim the bow towards that obstruction and then pull away. Nice, gentle, easy strokes. In this case, I've got some swirling water over on my right oar, and that creates a situation where I don't have to pull quite so hard on my right to maintain that position. And we've got great big boulder, the bow is pointed towards, so I can just gently pull away from it. And now we start to pay attention to what's down below us, which is the heavier whitewater portion of this chute. Continue to scan and look for obstacles near and far. Gently pull the boat back and prepare to drop into this next chute. Got a real significant obstacle on my left side. Some shallower water on my right, so I just gotta thread the needle here. We start down into these standing waves, and pull the boat away from the obstacle. Come through the standing waves with sufficient speed to keep the bow pointed downstream. When we get down in here, there's a great big standing wave. Current wants to push into the left bank here. Gently pull away. Point the bow into the heavy water, and push, and ride it out. Drop down through, 
Excellent. Continue to scan for obstacles or any kinds of problems. And it's just that easy. 